We haven't checked in with Sneeko in a really long time, but I am fascinated at this narrative that he's selling, which I am cynical about, that he basically turned down $20 million because it was haram. I turned down $20 million a year because I don't want to gamble. Because I'm thinking long term. When I look back at like my body of work, I think back to the, the videos that were on BotTube before they deleted it. Like my whole life I put out there on the line, like all my experiences, shared experiences, hours of sleepless nights, all writing, I dropped out of school to do this, bro. I risked everything to talk about this and they still call me a grifter? Why the fuck did I lose everything? to talk about this then knowingly i can make 20 million dollars in one year and i'm saying no because i actually care you understand that's life-changing money that's retiring my entire family that's money for the next generation and the next generation after that that's what i could be doing i'm choosing not to do it and they don't talk about that that's cap <laughs> I, I accuse you of capping. Now, Gideon, if you guys missed that, did turn down millions of dollars because he converted sort of harder into his Christianity or I guess came back into it harder. I was about to take a, I was about to take a gambling deal, chat. I was about to take a gambling deal. I was about to do a deal with my bookie. I was giving myself so many reasons to take the deal. I was trying to trick my brain into saying, oh, I'll be able to work more directly with these sporting companies and everything. Chat, bro, I was going to be clearing. I was going to be making a lot of money, a lot of money and for minimum work. And that seemed more real in a lot of ways than Sneeko's journey. Religion is performative. We know it is. For a lot of people, they really believe it. But for so many people, for some of the most prominent mega church preachers, we know religion is a performance. And so I wouldn't be surprised if Sneeko is performing. He does it very often and almost all of the time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. Thanks for having me on. Alhamdulillah. How are you, brother? I'm doing good. I'm doing good this morning. What's your name away? from so I, I still need to come with the with the muscle name um are you a revert, revert too yes well, what's your your muscle name ibrahim ibrahim and what was it before antonio antonio so my name everyone calls me sneeko so my name is sneeko i like when the brothers call me brother sneeko it has a good ring to it brother sneeko <laughs> but i think something like um abdul ahmed would be good abdul ahmed sneeko something like that Mashallah. i have to uh, yet to decide what was your experience like growing up? My experience growing up was pretty similar to this area here. I was born in Manhattan, and I grew up a lot in New Haven, Connecticut. And so right now we're in Plainfield, New Jersey, and it's, it's very similar. It's like the same distance from New York, same sort of atmosphere. It's really diverse. And also what I like about this hotel is that it reminds me of being uh, playing soccer when I was a kid because you get all these like kids playing sports, and it's it's a, it's like a, a travel sports team hotel. Like People don't really come here. They're just here by chance because they're playing some team in the area. So much I was like pretty normal, you know, East Coast American, but uh, diverse too. There was a, a cool moment yesterday during the, the Q and A, and there was a Haitian brother in the crowd. He's like "Sak basse," and I'm like "Namabule," and people don't even know that I'm that I'm Haitian. My dad's um, from Haiti, and I know I don't look it. And even Sheikh's mom made a joke calling me uh, Chinese. <laughs> he said a, a word that I don't want to repeat now, but like I, it took me by surprise in the Majid. But um, yeah, I, so I, I come from a, a pretty mixed background. Also, I grew up Catholic, so the Philippines and Haiti, they're both were colonized by you know Catholic monarchy. And the countries today, they still practice Catholicism pretty heavily. The Philippines is one of the most religious countries in the world, if I'm not mistaken. So I grew up with those values and I went to a Catholic school for one year in kindergarten. Every week I had catechism, which is where you read the Bible and you you study things. And it's like a process. It's like a, a rite of passage to becoming a Catholic man. So, well, also girls are in catechism as well. Did you grow up Catholic? Christian. Grow Christian, like Baptist. Baptist, Protestant, Presbyterian. I went to a Catholic. It's interesting to hear people's religious journey. I am fascinated by people's religious journey, especially when they come in and out of it. Because Sneeko did leave the Catholic Church. He was like an atheist, an agnostic. And even Andrew Tate. Do you know Andrew Tate used to make fun of Islam? Do you know he used to tweet like very offensive things about Islam? And he used to be an atheist. And I think that's interesting. Now... To be fair, like I said, religion attracts a lot of grifters because religion is a really good way to make people feel like you're on the same team, even if you're not. All you have to do is say, like, you believe in God and everyone's just like, yes, ma'am. Now, of course, people are can be like cynical and be like, I don't know if you're really a part of the brotherhood like you should be. And so there's a part of that that plays a role. But I do think it's interesting to watch the journey. It is very interesting. And why Islam? Like, why did the grifters in the menosphere choose Islam? Probably because it's more modernly misogynistic compared to the Christian sects. The Christian sects are also misogynistic, but I think Islam sort of has like a more traditional relationship with misogyny, more so. So it probably actually fits the 
red pill rhetoric probably pretty well. And this is no shade on Islam. You do you, but you know what I mean. A little bit, but mostly Baptist. Okay. Is that the one where they sing in the church? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm like, hallelujah. Been all of that. Yeah, getting yeah. crazy in there. Yeah. <laughs> Those are fun. I was kind of jealous of the Baptist churches. You see, like, the people down south in, the, in their churches. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and then compared to uh, Catholic churches. Yeah. I, I, not to be rude, but it's a little boring. It's just like, say, hallelujah. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Okay, that is true, but I like it. I like it. I'm not going to lie. I don't need church to be not boring. I actually think the more serious it is, the more I like it because it feels more real. I just feel like if you don't take it that seriously, it's not that real, but also don't take yourself too seriously. But also when you're dealing with God, maybe take yourself a little seriously. It's kind of like weird, but yeah, Catholics do sound like that. That's funny. Uh, and I, you know, I had a decent experience. That I think there's a lot of good things about uh, Catholic values, but there's just things that push me away. And I was speaking about that yesterday, like the idea of confession. I don't, I don't think Baptists have that. Yeah. Uh, confession, you know, sitting in a, in a booth with a man and telling your sins is like, why would I tell this guy what it was going on? I don't want to, if I'm going to go confess my sins, I want to talk to God. Not this random dude. He's like, okay, 10 Hail Marys. A lot of people have a very hard time with confession. I think the reason confession psychologically works really well is because it forces you to face yourself, like almost admitting you have a problem versus if you just tell it to God, it's probably e like it, it, it disconnects you from the responsibility. But also instead of telling the congregation and being shamed, you kind of share it with somebody who can kind of take that burden on for you and listen to those things. I, you know, I think when you do a lot of emotional labor for people, when you have, when you're the kind of person who people tell their secrets to, you know that they're really carrying a burden. And when they can tell another person that they've been carrying this burden, there's something magical that happens that just doesn't occur when you don't say it to another person. Another per person witnessing you is a very specific, it's a very specific phenomenon and sensation. I have a friend who's a priest and him and I have talked about this because our line of work is very different but similar where sometimes people really do call me to talk to me about things they feel like they can't exactly talk to the people in their lives about. And even though, you know, they have other people like coaches or therapists or fitness people or other people in their life that help them with other things, there are just some things they feel like they can tell me because I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, I understand that bubble. I know where that's from. And I then have to carry that like, wow, like this person is really going through it right now. And you carry a lot of that like, wow, like that person's life is really difficult right now. And it's a lot, you know, you weighs on you. And then a priest is like that as well. They carry the burden for you slightly, but also it just it really does something to say things out loud to somebody. He's 10 our fathers like, father, I murdered someone and I stole and I hate my life and my parents and I don't want to become a, a Christian and this is a waste of time. 10 Hail Marys. That's not going to do like the di diagnosis does not help anybody. And I, I think I kind of stepped away from that. But I think a lot of people do have a strong faith with Catholicism and uh, I, that's better than being a disbeliever. So I'm, I'm happy for them. But I never had that that sort of connection. It was very tedious and you know, it was always something something that I felt like I had to do rather than I wanted to do. I remember like I went to church every Sunday and my brother and I would plan out how to get through the hour of mass every Sunday. So like we would bring toys like those before the, the cell phone stuff like yeah, that. So yeah. I would bring like. Yeah, see, I think kids bringing toys to church. See, I feel like if you're going to raise your kids religious and this is how my parents did it. It's like no distractions. Pay attention or learn how to pay attention. I do think bringing toys and food and snacks to church. I really don't get it. Now, of course, again, the part of religion that I think people miss out on is the discipline part. Like one of the perks to religion is you learn discipline. So one of the things I will say about all of my siblings is we have an insane amount of discipline, not perfectly and not across the board. A lot of us are not disciplined with a lot of things. But one thing we could do at church was sit and pay attention. And other kids, we would watch them and be very confused on like why they couldn't pay attention. And a big part of it is because they're just not trained to. They just don't know how. It's a skill. And so it's like one of those things. Now, as an adult, I have a harder time in church now as an adult than I do as a child. As a child, church was easier because I believed. But now as an adult, I basically, last time I went to church, I just ran like a thousand scenarios. Like, what if we had a church? And I was like, I'll do this. And then I'll do this. And then I'll hit him over the head with this. And then I'll grab this. And then I'll grab this kid here because this kid is here. Like, I just literally spent the hour pretending there was like a sh in church and what would I do? hypotheticals really get me through the day, you know, when I'm bored. <laughs> hypotheticals really be, you know, a help, you know. Um, Ingrid says it always feels culty when everyone says stuff in unison in service. You know, what's interesting is that's also something else where it's the same thing with the national anthem or the same thing with 
And with anything, if you say something in a group, including a hate mob, including a protest, you feel more powerful. It is amazing to me when you feel connected to thousands of people who don't know you. And I've been in big crowds, concerts. I've like cried with people at church. I've cried with people at concerts. I've cried with people at protests. It's because we're all saying the same thing in unison. All of our energy is being put into the, like, the universe. And it feels so powerful. And that's what does make a cult work or a religion work or a protest work or politics work. Or that's what makes anything with groups work. As you are all saying the same thing. You are all on the same page. It feels really good. You know, Violet says, so technically you were playing during church Brit. Yeah, but I wasn't distracting other people because consent matters. I just think it's rude to distract other people. I know kids cry. It's not a big deal. You know what I mean? And they even have a children's section at my parents' church with like soundproof walls, which is really cool. In case your kid is crying, no big deal. Just go into the room. But yeah, it's kind of interesting. Rubber bands. And then just, just so that I could like absentmindedly like play with the rubber and then shoot it at my brother through the pew. Because if you, you're you blocked by the pews and um, unlike a Majid, Majid, you all sit on the floor in the churches, there's pews. So you could kind of hide there and I could like shoot a rubber band. And if I didn't have a rubber band, I would get my mom's hair tie. So just I'd have something wow. to do. It was that boring. They didn't let me bring my Game Boy because it's loud and it's really obvious. But that was my experience. It just was not. And that's why I, I, I'm very happy to be revert. And also that you're a revert as well. I think reverts, we have like a different connection with Islam. That, yeah. that was something I didn't realize when I reverted is that the born Muslims are, are envious in a way because we have a special connection, you know, that because we were chosen and we we found it um, because of the purity of our hearts and because we were supposed to. Like Allah willed that we were supposed to become reverts. And it's like you, it's like meeting your, your first love, yeah. you know, by chance. It's like in a grocery store, you just catch her and then that's your soulmate. <laughs> so it's like Islam is the soulmate that we found, the one that never got away. Yeah. So yeah, the mics. It's interesting. They also talk about it as like a revert like you were born muslim and you found allah again which i think is like a really interesting idea i do like that idea it's kind of like a, a play on finding your destiny or finding what's determined for you so there's something about that that is kind of interesting discord says i fell away from religion when i realized i got the same feeling from concerts as i did singing worship music i practiced a weird eccentric or no eclectic pagan archetypal spirituality where i believe it's all both real and not real it's like jpb talks about religion i mostly started falling away from church when I could recreate that feeling too of the Holy Spirit and other things. That was the beginning of it where I was like, oh, I can, yeah, I can recreate this feeling that I'm getting in church in other places. And that is a phenomenon that did make me start to disbelieve in in, in religion. Same discord. Biza says you have ADHD, Sneeko, that might contribute to why you were so bored. Hello experience so far has been has been great and i'm very happy to have found uh, the religion that resonates with me did you always believe in god i didn't always believe in god see even when i was um a catholic growing up i had like ups and downs and then there was a phase and i'm sure you remember it in like 2012 2013 like i would think the early 2010s late 2000s where richard dawkins i think that's the name of uh, he wrote this book called the god delusion and there was this big wave on reddit i don't know if you ever go on the, the website reddit but there was the huge atheism wave uh during the obama years and i, I kind of fell into that i was like reading all this stuff like oh how could god is a guy in the sky like you're just going to pray to a man in the clouds. And I kind of fell into that whole thing. And atheists have a superiority complex about them. They think that they are smarter because like, how could you like, how silly would it be to believe in something childish like religion? You believe in a storybook and all this stuff. So I was a disbeliever for a while. And I, I got off on that, that superiority complex. Like, oh, these idiots, they believe. Everyone goes through this phase, not everyone, but there, me, there's a group of kids. That's my stereotype. I left religion, became a, like a edgy atheist moved into you know, agnosticism sort of, and mostly just moved into like, God's not real, but like, if you believe in him, great, move on. Like, I'm over it. I don't care if people are religious, but obviously like, mind your business. But yeah, I, th I think it's funny that Sneeko fell into that bubble too, because, you know, my sister and I had found Sneeko when he was just a kid. And I'm like, oh, this kid is interesting. I wonder who he'll become one day. And then when Sneeko and I would talk, there is that kid in him still. But the decision he's made now to be in the bubble he is now is like so embarrassing. But, you know, people pick a bubble. People pick a bubble and it's fine. It's not our job to be attached to his journey. But man, the again, don't live for people's potential, huh? But Sneeko gets to be who he wants to be in this lifetime. And this is who he's choosing to be. Which is an interesting choice. I thought he would go in a different direction. And maybe he will. I still give him another, what, eight years, nine years? How long has it been? 
I still give him time. He's still really young. Let's see where he is in his 30s. It'd be weird if he was this guy in his 30s, but very possible. It's very possible. Believe in religion. But then you reach a breaking point when, when you, because nothing matters anymore. If you do not have religion, if you don't have Islam, then there's no sort of moral consistency. Yeah, I think people who only get their morals from religion, I just think that's, okay, so there's two groups. People who get their morals from religion and they can't find it outside of it. People who think it's funny that you need morals from a religion but can't actually figure out how to get it either. Because there are a lot of people that will say that, like, why do you need religion to be moral? But then they don't have any morals either. And by morals, I mean when temptation hits, you say no. Guys, it's no use to have morals if when temptation comes, you don't follow anything. That's, that's why it doesn't make sense. People need religion, some people, because there's a consequence of God. The consequence should only be how you face yourself. But if you're never facing yourself, then it doesn't matter. So all these like atheist agnostics that I meet who also don't have any morals, but they think they do. No, you don't. Because when temptation comes knocking, you suck the tit of, you just suck, you just, okay. If you're going to suck the titty, how are you saying no to temptation? You know what I'm saying, girl? You know what I'm saying? I just feel like it's not about God. It's about values. And nobody has values the way they think they do with anything and I, I, I hit a breaking point where I'm like well nothing matters because that's what happened that's what the mm, disbeliever believes nihilistic. they have no mm, he went into nihilism and then chose religion very interesting no sort of consistency and their morality is always going to change and update so you need to have something consistent that that's never changed and that that was Islam for me how did you first hear about Islam or what attracted you to it not to, to racially profile, but I'm sure you've read the Malcolm X autobiography. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that was that was it for me, the Malcolm X autobiography. Malcolm X had a, a really profound impact on my life, and that was the first time I really learned about Islam. I think probably even before that was 9-11. That was actually my first time hearing about it, which is, that's going to take years to deprogram all the propaganda that fed through the TV about Islam. But then when I read the... Ooh, Discord says, I think Sneeko will fall away from religion when he realizes that religious people also don't have morals. Maybe, let's see. Malcolm X autobiography, I was about 10 years old. My dad gave me that book and I saw the front of the book and Malcolm X looks kind of like angry and scary. The picture they use in the front is like, <laughs> he's just, I think that was when he was still Nation of Islam yeah. and before he was a Muslim. And you, you can actually see the racism in his eyes in the front. It's really polarizing. I recommend everybody read that book in the front, uh, just seeing him with that finger. And you could see that he's like really passionate about what he's speaking about. And it, it really, it drew me to, to read this. And I read it really quickly. The autobiography, it wasn't written by him, but it, you know, it's him telling the stories. I'm not sure who transcribed it. And also there's a good movie by Spike Lee if you don't want to read Alex Haley yeah uh, that he wrote Alex Haley yeah. uh, the Spike Lee movie is also a good rendition of that book and it, it portrayed Islam in a way that I was not able to understand before that book because we have the, a lot of Americans have the idea that Islam is like sand people la, 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 like you that with the cloth yeah. the cloth and everything you just think it's a terrorist religion but seeing seeing it explained through his lens through an American way and then seeing his life transition and how he he went from being a, a drug dealer or a pimp stuff for law and he was in jail and he was able to find faith and then he completely turned his life around he became one of the most prolific speakers in American history an intelligent eloquent speaker I do love Malcolm X. I think he's so interesting. Speaker in a time where black people were not considered to be intellectual at all. Yeah. And the fact that you could see his debates and the way he was conducting himself in interviews in the 1960s next to uh, major white television programs was really commendable. And it seemed like that all came from his faith. And so I became really interested in Islam afterwards. And I, I remember there's videos of when I'm like 13, 14, like after I read the book, I like I bought his glasses. He had these 1950s glasses that were like this, and it just made him look smart. So I, I wore the same ones. And I I remember wanting to, to become a Muslim. And then, but I, I think what drew me away after that, because I was close and I was even, there's tweets that are still up from when I was like 12, 13. Still have the same account from back then, from 10 years ago. I'm like, I want to become Muslim because of Malcolm X. But then wow. what happened afterwards, the US intervened in Syria. I'm like, why are we intervening in Syria? Why are we going in Iraq? Why are we going to all these places? Always sending billions of dollars of military aid to the, these foreign, like what, what, chemical weapons in Syria. What does that have to do with anything? And I think that that stuff um, pushed me away, that, that negative image uh, of that the US was betraying in the Middle East. Then, uh, and then I was able to come back. So, tell me the moment when you realized Islam was the truth. The moment I realized Islam was the true religion was in a in a debate with um, with Sheikh Uthman actually. Like he was a, a big reason. So I, I started streaming two years ago, and I started to wake up in a sense. I, I started to realize all the control mechanisms that they put forth, and so that I got really angry. I was like, why? I can't believe that they they don't 
care about us at all. They're actually trying to push us further away from God so that we become weak and we become easily controlled. With God, you're going to be reliant and dependent upon God and then God alone. That's what a Muslim is, is submitting to God's will. When you don't have that, you end up submitting to the government's will or to Instagram's will. If they're your God, then they don't, they're not going to care about you. They, all they want to do is, is monetize you forever and make as much money off of you and use you like a product. And I realized God was real. And then I started looking more into it and there was a moment where... I mean, worshiping... Uh, a product is the problem so yeah if, if instagram is your god then you're just a materialist which is very funny coming from sneeko considering he's so materialistic him and um actually i don't know if this is true the arab world has a section of it that's very materialistic which is very very counterintuitive i think to real humility but i also think there's like a part of it that's very into that to be fair i think it i understand Dan, from a business perspective, why that's the case. But it is sort of interesting to see how much materialism and like the worship of money and the worship of materialism plays a role in how even Muslim countries sell themselves to the West, which is interesting. But Andrew Tate and all these other people are just so into it. Like, what's the difference from a Bugatti and Instagram at the end of the day? It's the same thing. If you're dumb enough to buy a Bugatti, then what does it matter if you're on Instagram? It just feels like weird because I'm sorry, like what part of religion and a Bugatti go together? I don't understand people who worship money when they're religious. I mean, it just doesn't make sense for anyone who's really on a journey of introspection to worship money, but feels like a cope. I had like an equal amount of Christians and Muslims like trying to pull me in either direction, which is, you know, it's not ideal, but that's what happens when you're a public figure. And so I, I pretty much got to the, the realization that so God's real. These are the two religions that make the most sense to me. But then and there was a debate panel with, with Sheikh Uthman and he, the way he was able to, to debunk the logic of the Trinity, because the Trinity never made sense to me as, as a Catholic growing up, and maybe to you as a Christian growing up. I was never able to understand because they say that the Father, Son, Holy Spirit are, are equal. I, when I was growing, I never prayed to the Holy Spirit. There's never a time I got on my knees and then prayed oh holy spirit save me that never happened but if the holy spirit is equivalent to jesus and god it because it, it, even then when you say this you're like the holy spirit it's not the same you know it's not equivalent but you they say it is they say the holy trinity is uh is equal uh, and also the fact whenever i would pray when i was younger i never prayed to jesus a man whenever i was praying and talking and whenever i and i was looking for something or looking for guidance i would pray to god i wasn't picturing g i was thinking that there's some there's a one god that's greater than us mm -hmm. A, a God that we can't comprehend. I didn't have this picture, this image of a, of a white dude floating in a cloud with a beard. That never made sense to me. Well, why would God be a white dude with a beard? And so I would just I, I would just talk to God, and I didn't have an image of it, but I knew God existed. And so when Islam was explained that this is the monotheistic religion, and we're not able to to comprehend exactly what God looks like, all these things that's, that's not important. But there's an ever merciful, great being called Allah that's that created us, and it's it's our it's our duty to to ask Him for things when we need guidance and to, to worship him because he created everything. When did you take your Shahada and how was that experience? I took my Shahada in Dubai, which is in the UAE, in February of 2023. That was a little over a year ago. I went into a masjid with my uh, my brother Sartorial Shooter. He brought me in there and I started praying. And so I just like, I was learning how to pray and they, they're they like, oh, you have to say this. And then I just said it. And I'm like, oh, now I'm, they're like, you're Muslim now. I was like, what? I, didn't even know. <laughs> I just wanted to like, I just wanted to check it out. And they, they're like, yeah, we got you. No, I'm joking. They didn't say that. But they, they basically said, after I left the masjid, um, um, he was like, yeah, you're, you're, you're Muslim now. And I, I tried to find like a logical reason. So I, that I wasn't cause I still wanted to, uh, Beza says, I feel like Sneeko had, uh, has a kind of juvenile understanding of Catholicism and Christianity in general. I think a lot of people have a very juvenile understanding of everything they do. Like we really don't know things the way we think we do. And that's the premise of my realization for my introspection journey where I was like, I don't know a lot. And I don't think anyone else knows a lot. I think they know what they know. Like I know myself really well and I'm still learning about myself, but I know myself really well. I know lots of things really well, but I don't know a lot. And I think people rely on these like the shoulders of giants to kind of guide us. And I think that's really reasonable. And I think as a collective, we really push each other forward. And I think that's really good. But I do think that people have a very simple understanding of most of their life, but they think they have a deep understanding. And I think that's fine. Most of civilization was built off of this. It's not like you need a deep understanding, but I think we need to be okay with the fact that people don't really have that deep understanding they think they have. 
And most people who come to conclusions come to conclusions because it feels right. Even though they say it's logical, it really is just that they feel good and they feel safe there. And I think that's fine. I think it is fine to pick a path in which you feel safe, including religious. You know, as long as you aren't using that as a, a way to make somebody else feel unsafe, which I think is always the issue we're all going to have to face every time we engage with civilization, which is even though we're civilized, we're always looking for reasons to ostracize and include and ostracize and include. But I don't blame Sneeko for going through this journey when all of the elders around him are on very similar paths. Now, some people who are very into their religions and very into sort of the study of them, those are the most fascinating people to me. I think those are some of the most fascinating people I love to listen to because they really love this thing that they they deeply, deeply sort of research into this thing that they love and tear apart. I love those types of people because I'm like, tell me more about this thing that you spent all of your time paying attention to. Like if Sneeko really did pay all of his attention to the Quran and like he could spend the next 30 years dissecting it and still finding mysteries in it. And I think that's a dedication and a commitment most people aren't willing to engage in because it's a lot, especially when you're busy doing other things with family members and stuff. So I don't know, shout out to the people that, that really love the thing they love, but I don't know if Sneeko is dedicated to anything like that quite. I think he's too focused on the materialism right now. Abby says, I don't really understand how you cannot know yourself when you live with yourself 24 seven. Is it because people fool themselves? Think about it like this. Why do we ask questions about ourselves? Why do we ask questions like about like, hey, how do I talk to my partner or how do I buy groceries or how do I do this thing? Or do you have any advice for someone that's not as confident? Or do you have advice for like knowing what career you should have? All of that is related to knowing yourself. There are always versions of yourself you don't know. I don't know myself 100% because there's always a new part of myself I'm learning. Like I'm growing constantly. So every time I grow, I, there's a new part of me to learn. And then every time I grow, a new part of me gets unlocked that I didn't even know was there. And I'm so excited to learn about. So I know myself really, really well for what is clear to me. But then you're always learning yourself. Now imagine you've never asked yourself those questions. You know how many people I talk to and I'm like, why did you do this? And they're like, oh, I, I don't know. No one's ever asked me that. Why did I do this? I saw a TikTok of a guy who said, okay, I think I unlocked like a new, a new like mind fuck a little bit. He went on a date with an autistic girl and she asked him, tell me everything you remember about your 18th birthday. And he was like, what? And he's like, no one's ever asked me that before. No one's ever asked me a question like that. What? Like everything I remember about my 18th birthday. He's like, holy fuck. He's like, I felt like this girl knew me so intimately after our first date. And he goes, no one's ever asked me that. That's, you know, just sort of that ND Riz, but what comes naturally to some people doesn't come naturally to other people. And even my partner and I, we asked each other that, like, what do you remember from your 18th birthday? And then we just sat there and tried to remember. And it is kind of weird. I don't really remember everything from my 18th birthday. It wasn't significant. The only thing I remember about my 18th birthday that was significant is my dad handed me a beer and a cigar and said, you're a woman now. That's what I, that's the one thing I remember from my 18th birthday. Everything else, I'm sure I could be reminded and I'd be like, oh yeah, but I don't at this moment remember more than that. So it's kind of interesting what you know about yourself is a very interesting idea, especially in a world where you can ask something, something, someone, something so simple and they're like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if parents don't know when their kids are born, like so many parents don't know their kids own birthdays and they made that kid, they were there kind of interesting it's interesting what we what we pay attention to and what we don't you, you know when you when you revert you still want to do all, all the things in your past life so i was thinking about it but like the, i agree with everything there's something here i believe in it this is the the solution to all the problems in my life and all the problems in the world i'm muslim but it was it was just like a logical conclusion and then afterwards i did it properly w w with sheikh uthman uh, i think in may of last year what was the biggest challenge after becoming muslim 
the biggest challenge after becoming Muslim was reading the Quran. Um, it, it's really heavy. I've, I probably went through once at this point because I, I don't read it in order. But in the beginning, it was it's really heavy. Like that first read, it's like, whew, it's like you have to take a lot of, I don't, I don't know, maybe that's, that was my experience. It's like, it's like you have to put it down and then it, it, you can't read it like a book. There's too much knowledge and there's too many and it makes you emotional, makes you think a lot and you make connections to, to your life and things. That, it's like all the puzzle pieces are in the Quran. I highly recommend everybody watching this read it. I think that was the most difficult other than that, it was it was a very easy transition. But being where I am, I live. I will be I will be real with you. I think I could trans I could convert to Islam pretty easily. Not literally, because I don't believe in God. But I actually think Islam, Judaism, and Catholicism are so similar. I actually think converting to Islam would feel very comfortable for me. Even wearing hijab and stuff would feel like it would make a lot of sense to me. I mean, nuns wear head coverings, Catholics wear head coverings in Latin church and Latin mass. So for me, my brain goes, oh yeah, Islam is so much like Catholicism. It's got ritualistic prayers. It's got, you know, way you move your body, the things you say, the way you pray. I don't know. I just feel like converting to Islam from Catholicism would be so familiar. It feels so familiar. I think if, as long as you're not Islamic phobic, like as long as you don't have issues with Islam, right? Like it, if you really don't have issues with Islam, you'll realize how similar it is to Catholicism in my opinion, as a former Catholic. I just feel like every time I watch Muslim people on TikTok, I'm like, oh, this just reminds me of Catholicism in my mind. So shout out to Islam, I guess, for being familiar. Discord says, I wonder if there's an ego aspect to it, like converting to Islam provides him with a sense of importance, being a part of a powerful group and moral superiority, also literal superiority over women. Islam is to the is to religion what the red pill is to social politics. I do think it's ironic. Religion allows you to put your ego to rest and at the same time gives you ego for being a part of a group you think is the right one. It's kind of ironic. I, I think like you're supposed to go into religion to humble yourself before God, but also you end up becoming sort of like built up on ego because you're like, yeah, my religion's the right one. It's the answer for the literal world. And that's interesting in miami right now which is you know it's not a very muslim place as in fact ah oh, great question niall says how is sneagle so close to becoming a foreign is now a muslim has he fallen back into a bubble or is he pretending to be a muslim to appeal to a certain bubble you know the levels are an ongoing thing that i'm figuring out i've even you know recently i've been <laughs> collecting data and i feel like the data has shown that even fives can go back because introspection is a tool you have to constantly use and I've even seen fives go back into sort of two bubbles. And it's very interesting. And I think it's just very human. If you aren't actively participating in introspection, extrospection, I think you do choose a bubble. And I think you go to the bubble that feels safe and you get wrapped up in the narrative. And I do think Sneeko chose a bubble that he feels comfortable in. I know fours who live as twos. They, they're fours, but they live as twos. And they feel very comfortable. And I think that makes sense. Like you're allowed to make that choice. You can be a five who lives as a two. You can be a five who doesn't practice introspection and then you get wrapped up because you're still a biological creature. Like you still are a traumatized biological creature who's going to get triggered, who's going to feel wounded, who's going to feel defensive, who's going to be like, my group is better than your group. And I'm like, okay. And even having, because again, what conversation can you even have as a very introspective person that's along these lines? You know, so it's kind of like it's one of those things where ultimately you get to choose what you want to do in your life. That's the point. You get to choose. Just know that it's a choice. And at the same time, what is a choice? Right. If you're this biological creature, that's where the introspection comes in. How much of my life is a choice and how much of it just feels like one? Just one of the most anti, not anti in terms of hatred, but it's just, um, what's the word, fitna? It's a, it's Miami's all fitna. So I, I think trying to to stay on Dean in the place where there is none. Uh, I think that the easiest one to get rid of was uh, was backbiting. I'm, I'm very cognizant now of, of how I speak about my brothers and of what I think of them and things like gossiping, all that. I Nibla says, I feel like a lot of people who turn to religion do it out of desperation, which isn't a bad thing. But I think Sneeko was very scared when he got banned from YouTube. I think it just feels good to be a part of a collective and it feels good to sort of feel like you belong somewhere and I don't blame him for wanting to be a part of a group. But I also think that that's a part of knowing yourself. 
I do think that's a big part of knowing yourself and knowing why you want to be a part of the group. It's not wrong to be a part of the group, but why do you want to be there? And then are you only choosing the group that gasses you up because you know what I mean? Or are you choosing a group that aligns with your values? And I think that's very different, right? David says backbiting. I hate that. What's backbiting? I actually don't know. I don't know that terminology. Can somebody tell me what that is? Is that um is that like snip like passive aggressive or something? What what is that? Talking crap and gossiping. Oh. Okay, so talking behind someone's back. That was very easy. And I, I actually, I didn't even read that within Islam. It just once I started becoming a better Muslim, that became the logical understanding that you, you shouldn't do this, which is, it actually is an Islamic belief. But when you start to, to fix things in your life, you realize how unimportant those types of conversations are and how every word you utter should be positive and, and should be uh, good because it does create your existence. I, I love the, the phrase, you're supposed to keep your, your mouth wet with the name of Allah. Mm -hmm. Always saying, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, um, inshallah, mashallah. Yo, I'm not going to play, though. It does sound cool, though. Like, Arabic words sound cool, bro. Like, I would go to my mom. I'd be like, mom, that's haram. And she's like, Ugh, who have you been listening to? Who's who's a Muslim you've been listening to? I was like, mom, haram. <laughs> I, I do think it sounds cool, though. I'm not going to lie. Arabs do look cool, bro. They got like swag. They got swag. Islam got swag. Gratitude and showing thanks because it's a reminder. It's a constant <laughs> reminder of, of God's existence and how God is ever present in our lives. Sometimes you get, when you're around non-Muslims, you don't want to say it as much, but because they, they get uncomfortable, right? They they, they get weird. Huh? But when you're around your, your Muslim brothers and you just say it all the time, it's just a constant reminder. Yeah. And, and it's a, there's a mutual understanding of why we're here and what we're supposed to do. What, what, you had something, a similar experience? We would just, talking about that yesterday it's code switching i noticed that because when we were around most of us all day i was saying oh so now you have to code switch oh so now you have to code switch i like how everybody knows what words there like blair knows what discrimination is you know and everybody knows like what discrimination oh i have the funniest tiktok to show you after this i have the funniest tiktok to show you after this i love when people realize like oh i now know what the code switching is and discrimination is and all these other things are yeah guys we're all doing it to each other we are all doing it to each other i don't know when humans are going to learn that probably never but newsflash we're all doing we all have bias and prejudice and all of us are absolutely 100 percent making the world harder for somebody else true true okay Charles says, do you think the whole Muslim thing is still 100% a grift despite him turning down 20 million? I don't think he turned down 20 million. When he gets to that point, I want proof. I don't know who in their right mind would give Sneeko $20 million unless they were asking him to sell his soul for very specifically like what moving money around. Like when did he get offered 20 million? Who Sneeko was never big enough to get $20 million. I'm sorry. Like who $20 million is not. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but that is an insane amount of money. That is an insane amount of money. So I don't know who is doing that, um, but I would love to see some proof of that. I just don't think it's, I think it's a story. This is my, because <clears throat> Sneeko's lied in the past. Sneeko lies all the time, okay? Here is what I think it is. I could be wrong because I would love to see receipts on it. So I'm happy. I'll make a video saying I'm wrong, okay? But if Sneeko lies about everything else and he saw Gideon get news because he turned down lots of money, maybe Sneeko was like, I'll tell people I turned down money too for my values. And then look, it's being used as the headline. My theory is that he did see Gideon do it and make moves, like make it popular. And I think that's what it is. I just think it's another lie. Like, alhamdulillah, like um, just natural within my vocabulary. And then I go back to being around Christians and then I'm like, oh, this is great. Mush right? I just saw, I <laughs> saw myself there, you know, and th that's a perfect example of code switching and how you, you, you change who you are really or with the people that you surround yourself with. That's why it's really important to keep brothers around you who are on Dean, because if you don't, you're going to you emulate who you're around. But that's actually it, I do think that's true, which is ironic that he's around Andrew Tate. You know what I'm saying? Izzy says, with Islam, there is an idea that you shouldn't be obsessed or addicted to things like music, TV. So it's more like you should have a healthy relationship with things that distract you from God. I mean, Catholicism, too. 
oh my gosh, my whole life, no cuss words in songs, no songs that are heavily about sex, no songs that are disrespectful to the God, like God, your Lord God. So even in Catholicism, you're not supposed to listen to music that's like blasphemous. You're not supposed to watch movies with sex scenes in them. You're not supposed to do things that are offensive to God. That's very normal in religion. So Islam is not unique in this. A lot of religions that don't listen to music or engage with music, that's not very unique. But I will say that it's not like Jehovah Witness where it's no music. Like Catholics and Muslims obviously have music. We just, it has to be clean in a, in a way. Actually, the perfect example of how you should not be around uh, these people too much because you're going to get dragged into that life. It starts with that first step. First, you're not saying the name of Allah, and then you're listening to music a little bit, and then you pick up the drink. It's a, it's a slippery slope. Yeah. What, what do you, you were mentioning in the elevator that you, you work for a, a youth group. Oh, no, I do a youth group at the master called Young Leaders. What's that like? I, I would like to do something like that. So we do a little bit of Quran and Islamic study and, you know, we go on outings. Just trying to keep away from the streets because the streets is calling. So it's like have them a place where they can hang out and feel comfortable. Just Oh, wait, Jehovah Witness can listen to music. I thought they're they are not allowed to do happy birthday or listen to music. Discord says they can listen to music. Who's the what's the religious cult that doesn't listen to or do happy birthdays? Who are they? Which ones are those? I'm going to keep them focused and stay on Dean and have Muslim friends where they're not, you know, having friends who's going to influence them to do something that they shouldn't be doing. There was a cool moment yesterday between prayers after one of the talks. Uh, all the kids were there and we just had some time to kill. So we all stepped outside and started playing football and, and soccer. There was about like 50, maybe 100 people there. And there were so many cars coming by and we barely got to play. <laughs> but we were still just like, that was the, a perfect example of being around brothers and how that could have a positive impact. If that was 100 people of different faiths, that would not have happened. There would have been, someone would have been smoking or drinking or someone, hey, let's go to the bar, let's go do this. It's just a, a reminder that how important it is to keep your brothers around you. How did your family and friends react to your conversion? They're very happy. I've had a, a really positive reaction from from everyone. I think because so many, uh, I mean, uh, my family and friends have an open mind and open heart and they, they can see how I've changed and they talk about the nur, like the, they say they have the glow in the face. And also there's nothing that they disagree with in Islam. Uh, some of the stuff like it's a little confusing to them, like, oh, they mistreat women. And then you explain that actually- Every religion mistreats somebody. Somebody's gotta be the brunt. I love how Discord is arguing about what Jehovah Witnesses can do. Look, don't you love this? How like people are arguing it? Look. At the end of the day, different parts of the religion do different things. There are like Catholics that do things that like the Catholics I grew up with like don't do. Like we follow the Catholic Church, like the Vatican, Roman Catholics, and then like some people don't do that. So some people in chat who are like, uh, they don't do that. They do this. They do this. This is what bubbles are. So I'm not saying anyone's wrong. I'm saying we're all probably right because of how we grew up in bubbles. So we think like, oh. Like, I know what religion is because I grew up it, but I meet Catholics all the time who don't do Catholicism like my family does. Even though I was raised Catholic, I don't represent all forms of Catholicism. I just can't because there are different sects. So even though, you know, that's a whole controversy within itself, you know what I mean? So some of you are saying they do listen to music, but don't celebrate birthdays. And some of you are saying they don't celebrate birthdays, but they do listen to music. Some people are saying they don't drink tea. They do drink coffee. Like everyone is not sure, but you know, bubbles bro actually no muslim men respect muslim women more like in the west they say that feminism is how we respect independent queens and they're going around naked in public and doing protests for abortion but in fact islam respects women so much that we say let's cover them up let's preserve their beauty because they're supposed to be protected and their rights should be within the household and, and their rights go down to our biology like we, we should not treat them equal to men you can't escape biology everything is biology everything is bio everything you do is biology because they're not equal to men they're different and that doesn't mean that they're worse that just means that the difference. So we respect women so much that we give them specific roles, just like we give men specific roles. And once they understand that, like, well, you know, I'd actually, women shouldn't probably not be the CEO of every company. Women should probably take time off if they're pregnant. Women should probably, you know, stay in the household and protect themselves and cover themselves up instead of being naked in public and twerking in the streets. This is how you respect and, and protect the women that you love and care for. What's your favorite? Sarah says, I'm hoping y'all are not spreading misinformation about Islam. I heard in Islam, they actually do believe in aliens and they actually have a mosque up in space. They're the only religion that have a connection to aliens. Facts. I think Sneeko even said that in a video. I'm pretty sure he talked to a scholar about this. So. The thing about Allah. 
that he's all knowing. I, I, there's funny things about with the other religions that they think that they can kind of get around that or trick God. In Islam, God is all knowing and all forgiving and all merciful, all knowing. So there's there's no point in trying to get around that. Every thought you have, you're like, well, you're reminded about what you're supposed to do because Allah knows best. What inspired you to write the letter from Mecca? Izzy says, stop. My mom hates when I bring up aliens to piss her off. Listen, aliens? I don't even believe in aliens. But also, if they're real, they're real, okay? Could be real, though. You don't know. If you look, if any religion was going to have a connection to aliens first, it's going to be Islam because they're high up. Are, is Mecca high? I don't know. I don't know how things work in religion. I'm just kidding. Don't cancel me. Cancel me. Just kidding. It's a joke. It's a joke. We love our Muslim brothers and sisters. There's Muslims in the audience. You guys can correct us if we're wrong. If Jehovah Witness stuff is wrong, correct us. But you know, I think ultimately, do Muslims, Muslims, they have different sects, right? Like the Sunni and the Shia Muslims, right? So you guys have different rules for different bubbles too, huh? Everybody does. Where do you see yourself five years from now? That's a Ooh. job interview question. Ooh, where do you see yourself in five years? That's a great question. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't even know where I see myself in an hour. I Everything, I'm a very day-to-day -day person. And mm -hmm. I just decided my itinerary for the day uh, an hour ago. I didn't know I was doing this podcast. So okay, question for my audience. Question for y'all. Because I'm not a day-to-day -day person. I'm a day-to-day -day person when it comes to like the very micro. Like my health and my fibro and my spoons. I'm a day-to-day -day person. But... I'm not, and I've never been a day-to-day -day person in the macro of my life. Like, where am I going? Where do I see myself in five years? What do I want for myself? Like, I'm very goal-focused. So I make goals for five years from now, Brittany, 10 years from now, Brittany. For, and, and I think it helps me form my values because I have to think, where do I want to be in 20 years? I also have to think, what values are going to help me get there? So for those of you who are like day-to-day -day people, do you think that it's more of a struggle to form your values or figure out yourself? Or do you think, do you see any connection to that? I'm just brainstorming here. And for people that are long-term planners, how do you see the difference in your life? I wonder, because I do kind of think my life is a little easier than some of my friends that are more day-to-day -day thinkers. I just find myself having an easier, not that it's totally easy, but it's just slightly easier because they're never sure where they're going to be next year. But I already know where I'm going to be in the next like two to six years, depending on paperwork. And so it makes my planning like much easier. I'm much more relieved. What do you guys think? Any overlap there? So five minutes ago, yeah. uh, they, I was ambushed at, at breakfast. They, they sat down. We're going to get, I never know. I, you know, I, I'm a very, I li like to live in the moment. I, I do have long-term plans. I mean, I don't know where I see myself, but I want to continue giving Da. I want to be a better Muslim. Inshallah, I want to have a family. I want to be married. I want to be away from the fitna. I want to be more focused. I want to have read more. I want to be a better student of knowledge. And I think by that time, I want to have mosques that I can pay for and build. That's like one, one major goal. I don't know where I'm going to be in the world. I don't know what I'm going to be doing exactly. I don't know how I'm going to be making money, but I trust in Allah. Everything's going to work out. You said people's souls are aching for Islam. What did you mean by that? So I, I'm in this industry where everyone sells degeneracy. They make money. Yourself included. Zico is the king of degeneracy. All the content creators right now, the most successful ones, every single one is a pimp, a prostitute, a gambler, or promoting drugs. Oh, he's talking shit on Andrew Tate right now. He just said, Andrew Tate, I'm looking at you. He just said, Andrew, to the Tate, I'm looking at you. Or they're promoting gang violence, or all of them promote things that push you to, to kill yourself. He just said, fresh and fit, I'm talking to you. Fresh and Fit might not do, or Myron might not drink alcohol on his own show, but he certainly pushes it. How about you make your guests drink water instead of alcohol too? How about you make your guests come in sober? No, it's much easier to get them drunk and then make fun of them. This is why I say values. This is why I say values, okay? If I had a show in which I was sober, I would not then form my talk show over having drunk guests because I wouldn't want my guests to engage in behavior I think is bad when we're talking about real life shit. Myron always says he's talking about real life shit, real life things, important ideas, real dating markets. You think the real dating market is full of drunk people? You think the real dating market is a bunch of partiers who drunk who get drunk on a show? Please, ma'am. Please. Also, hold on. I want to read your answers. Nanki says, I plan my week ahead in my head, but I don't know what I want for my future yet. I think it's okay since I'm young and I have strong values. Still time for me to decide. Always time for you to decide. Doesn't even matter if you're 40. You always have time to decide, right? No problemo. Sarah says, honestly, thinking about what I'm going to do in five years brings me anxiety. Fair. That's good to know about yourself, right? Because you always want to play to your strengths. Halion says, my hopes and plans stay consistent with my values and if they shift slightly. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Guardian Angel says, 
I'm just building again from the ground up and exploring things. So I have a rough five year plan for career, but not much else. I mean, yeah, I, lo I love a rough plan. I do love a rough outline for my life. James says, I just, I had to get medicated for ADHD before I could learn to plan long term. You know what? I hear that a lot from ADHDers that it's very hard to plan for the future. So as the planner in my relationship, that's my job because yes, like we got to, he's a day to dayer and I'm like a five year planner. And it is, it's a really nice balance. So he can figure out, you know, what we're eating for dinner or like how day to day stuff's going to go. And I'm focusing on the, the long term plans. But yes, it is very interesting. I have I have heard that it's that bad right now. I've never seen it to this level where everyone is either a pimp or prostitute camp. So when you do this and you, you live for the dunya and you're making money from things that make the world a worse place your heart because islam is in everyone i think it's something that i don't know if that, I, mean, I don't know if that's true but i i do believe everybody is a muslim they, and the ones that aren't just haven't realized it yet so when they do these things and they they sell out what they believe in to benefit in this life instead of in the next their soul is calling out for something more and especially the people that that watch these these content creators influencers the modern influencer is more influential than a politician i think that like if we saw yesterday the way the kids were responding and stuff like that joe biden could to do that i honestly think that i could have i can energize the youth more than the current sitting president of the united states of america and i don't think that's an exaggeration so when these people when content creators are influencing the youth more than than everybody else there's an impact that's the grift that's the grift part it's kind of true but kind of false first sneeko couldn't energize the youth better than the sitting president unless he's talking about 12 year olds and in that case you should be embarrassed but also it is true that, first of all, politics is very polarized and the, the majority of the youth aren't going to be involved in politics. So he's right on that front. Um, the CEO of Instagram was just talking about how on Instagram, he definitely thinks that people trust influencers more than publishers. So Instagram is focused on uplifting the individual content creator. And I think that's really interesting. But I do think Sneeko needs to remember that he's been kicked off YouTube. He's only in certain platforms. His audience is relatively young and he should be encouraging the youth in a better direction. But also what is that better direction? For him right now, it's Islam. I do wonder if Sneeko could encourage them in that way. He might be correct just because influencers have that. But does Sneeko think he's Kai Sinat? Like does Sneeko think he's iSpeed? I was watching Speed. Speed. I Speed Show. I Speed. My partner says I say his name wrong. Speed Show. Show Speed. I was watching Speed on his live stream he is, he was in, I think, Korea. I can't remember, but he was so entertaining. He was so energetic and so kind and so loving and like very good to his viewers. And I was like, Sneeko could never. Sneeko does not have this charisma. He has so much charisma, Sneeko. But Kai and Speed have a very specific, when I was watching Kai with Kevin, it was so good. And I was like, oh, this is entertaining. Yeah. I, this is so funny. I think Sneeko thinks he's these guys. These guys are very big. Like, I don't even know if people understand how big they are as content creators. So it's kind of interesting. I think, but yeah, I think Sneeko, see, this, this has got to be the grift. Because there's no way he thinks he could contend with these people. But maybe he says it because he's manifesting it. Maybe Sneeko's a manifester. Nico in chat says, Brittany, I just finished your Ariel Scarcella video and I just want to say I love your channel so much. You've challenged me. Are you challenging me to think differently and grow a few times and I love you for that? Oh my God, yes, girl. That's what we're doing here. That's what we're doing. We're growing. Emmy says, sometimes I get the vibe that Sneeko is semi-kidding and kind of trying to track himself into thinking it makes sense. He believes it because he thinks he's supposed to. Maybe in a good way, maybe uh, supposed to is a good way to word it. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. I, I think that's a good, yes, intuition. Sometimes I think these people say things. I think he is kind of manifest, like he's saying it. And if he says it enough, it will be real. I think that's true. I do. Yeah, but I think Sneeko does play a cognitive dissonance game with himself. I think I saw that when him and I were in contact. I, haven't, I obviously haven't spoken to him in so long now. But I think I saw that with him when we were in contact where I was like, you are lying to yourself. Like you're playing a game with yourself. You're saying you want these things, but you're not taking any of the actions to get them. What do you believe is a good form of doubt for non-believers? Do you know the Warner? Yes. Uh, the Warner, he does a great job at getting uh, new Muslims and, and reverts because he's like, all right, we're going to go catch a prayer. You want to go? Yeah. Come on, let's go. Let's go catch a prayer. Come on, man. He's just like the enthusiasm. It's like something cool we're going to do. It's like, yeah, let's go. He just like hypes people up like you're like you just did something cool. And then after they finish praying, 
come on, man, daps you up. It's just <laughs> that type of attitude I notice has been really successful because people are enthusiastic about religion instead of feeling like, you know, the Catholic Church is also struggling. They are really trying to find a way to recruit the youth. And I think that's really interesting. And look, I think religion is all kind of a construct. I mean, I think it's all a construct, right? I think society builds religion because it is a nice way to sort of be, but I don't think it's real. And I'm not here to stop you from being religious, but I don't really appreciate religions that sort of modernize to invite more people in because then it just definitely sounds like a business, but okay, you do you. It's like, let's change the branding. I kind of get it though, but it is interesting. Like the Catholic church has been very suffering for the youth and honestly, Islam's winning and like more power to them, you know, bring that fashion, you know, you do you, whoever wins, wins. But religion sometimes feels like a brand game. Like it feels like companies fighting for customers. It genuinely feels like that to me. So it's something mandatory. So you turned down a 15 to $20 million deal. Uh, what made you do that? It's against my religion. It's just not what you're supposed to do. I think even uh, without that, without Islam, I, I might have made the same decision because I just don't want, I don't want to sell out my audience. You know, the, the people that watch my streams, I want them to benefit. And that's why I like coming to these, these conferences, for example, because every word you utter, inshallah, it benefits everybody listening. So if I, am I going to utter a word or promote something that's going to make people worse, which just, that's the strategy of gambling. You profit because the people that are getting involved lose. That's how it works. The casinos don't make money because you're making the customers. They make money because everybody's losing and they even lock up the windows in casinos because they don't want you to jump out. It makes people extremely depressed and upset. And I, I just don't want them to, to do that. You know, it's, it's, it's not worth it. I, I know that I would live with the life of regret and remorse for, for promoting that for my own uh, personal gain. It's, it's too selfish. And I know that I could. Interesting. Cause Nico's such a selfish person. He's definitely been selfish in the past. He seems different here, but who knows, you know? Cam Cam says, did you hear the Catholic Church is making a Gen Z person a saint? Yeah, my mom is obsessed. She's been telling me about this kid for so long. Um, and she's very excited. And I'm actually getting news about it on my TikTok, which I think is interesting. But yeah, we have a new Gen Z saint, which isn't that like shocking. I mean, th there's a lot of young saints in the Catholic Church. So uh, it's kind of cool that he's like one of the first, I think, Gen Zers, right? I think he might be. But yeah, my mom's like really excited about this new saint. I, I can make that money myself. I don't I don't need to sell for quick money like that. May Allah replace that with something better. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who was it from? Wait, no receipts, that's it? Oh, I swear to God, if they don't even go into it, this is just another branding tool. There's no way Sneeko seriously was, who offered Sneeko $20 million? I refuse to believe this. I refuse to believe a company would put their name on Sneeko's brand when it's such a bad brand. Who did this? Better for you, I don't mean. This hadith that says that whatever you give up for the sake of Allah, Allah will reward you with something greater. Yes. Every yeah, every big religion has that rule. Okay, relax. Every time it's you come with something difficult. For example, it's the weekend. It's it's Sunday today, but we spent Friday and Saturday in the masjid, and all my friends are here. All my my former friends from my past life. People hitting me up. Let's go to this party. We have this this, and I decided to to spend the, like sitting on the carpet with my brothers in the masjid in New Jersey instead of Manhattan at a fancy club. And I like to make those decisions because you're giving up something that you know that's fun right now for the for the hereafter. It's the idea. I mean, that is what discipline is. Discord says Sneeko is so much more tolerable when he speaks with a more uh, with uh, more of his rage bait persona dropped. I don't know if it's the topic or just some more maturity. Who knows? Is this another act? Who knows? But I want proof for this $20 million. Maiden says it's so easy to say that when there's no proof. I know. So easy to brag about something that you didn't have to do. Because it would be a big deal to turn down $20 million if he did. That would be a big deal. I would want to give him his cred for that. But mm, Abby says, I perceive Sneeko as fake. I don't know why. Oh, because he is partially fake. There is a realness to Sneeko and then there's a fakeness to Sneeko, which to be fair is a very big part of everyone's life. Everyone is that sort of person in real life. That fakeness is just amplified on the internet. And because it's being witnessed, it's just a different feeling. But yeah, Sneeko is definitely, parts of him are authentic and parts of him are deeply fake or performative. You have delayed gratification. And every time you do it, you feel happier the next day. You know, it's early in the morning right now for the people watching this at home. It's, it's about 10, 11 a.m. Uh what? 
first of all, y'all said he looked tired when he first started this thing. And I was like, he does look a little tired. And then when he said it's early morning, I was like, oh, that's why he looks tired. It's probably like 8 a.m. And he's like, it's 11. And I'm like, um, look, as somebody who works nights, so I do wake up later my time. Is 11 a.m. early morning to anybody? When I'm at home or in the past life before, if you go out drinking, partying, or you're outside in the streets doing things you shouldn't do, you wake up and you feel slow, you feel, have anxiety, you don't want to do this. There's just all this negativity that comes with that. So every time you supplement that with something that's you're supposed to do, you feel much better. And I, I highly recommend you try that. So that hadith, every time you, you act upon that, you notice the benefits immediately. Why should other people learn about Islam or consider becoming a Muslim? This is an undeniable fact. The people that control the world are trying to take you away from God because they want to control you and they want to play God right here in this life. The people that control the world do not care about the hereafter. They care about acting like gods that should be worshipped and have ultimate control right now. If you believe that, then look for a solution. You, you don't want them to win unless you unless you do. If you want these people to rule over your, your life, then fine and, and let them win. Be addicted to and gambling and, and all the garbage that they provide. But I know that you don't. Just so you know, lots of people do not gamble or do porn and you don't have to be Muslim to avoid those things. Just like FYI. So look for the answers. And I highly recommend looking into Islam because Islam provides all the solutions to every single problem that the West has right now or the that shaitan is, is feeding into your ear right now. Alex says apparently the 20 mil was for a gambling company. Makes sense. This makes enough sense for someone trying to practice Islam to turn that down. I mean, gosh, even I turned down 20 million from a gambling company. You know what I mean? Like who wants to be associated with a gambling company in that way? You know, I mean, I'd heavily talk about it with my partner first because it's not just me turning down the money, right? I'm also turning it down for our, our family. But gambling would be a pretty sleazy way to make money. But still, was Sneeko ever worth 20 million? I mean, that'd be crazy for a gambling company to give Sneeko that. But then again, if it was Rumble, and or, or not Rumble, if it was Kick, because Kick is basically like a gambling site, if it was Kick and they gave Sneeko that and Sneeko has a really young audience, first of all, that's super unethical. If Sneeko's core audience is 12 to 14 year olds, what does Sneeko need a gambling contract for? So I could understand him saying like, no, that would be very bad. So maybe it could have been, but 20 million from a gambling company, maybe. He would, I think they could make that money back from Sneeko's audience, which is really sad. How are 12 year olds even spending money? Can I be honest with you? How do 12 year olds even have money? Like, how do teenagers even have money in the first place? Because even if you have a job or whatever, you're supposed to only work a certain amount of hours to go to school. So how do teenagers even get money to spend it on things? I don't get it. And why, why, why would your parents give you money? And before you say the word allowance, I'm sorry not everyone grew up rich, okay? Allowances are for rich kids. Everybody move over. Good ass Prophet Muhammad Sully was selling them anything. What would it be? If I could ask for... Um, I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't because uh, he's his uh, example is already perfect and we're, we're supposed to follow him. Like some, I got these thoughts, like I'm kind of wondering what he looks like, but I know we're not supposed to know that and it would change the, the perception. So I, I wouldn't ask him anything. Probably just thank him. Okay, this is the scenario. It's the day of judgment. What would you hope your meeting with Allah would be like? Again, I don't want to think about that too much. I think it's it's all a, a plan and it, it's something. Every time I hear people say, I don't want to think about that too much, I'm like, oh, interesting. Too great for me to comprehend. So I hope it's a, it's a great meeting. I hope it's a, a good conversation. I hope I did the right thing and Allah's the best supplanter. So whatever is supposed to happen will happen. So, all right, thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Man, Lord, I appreciate you. it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Interesting. Okay, good video overall. I'll go ahead and link it so you guys can check it out if you want to see it on your own. Interesting video, interesting version of Sneeko. There is a version of Sneeko that I, I also had I got the opportunity to see that was much more calm and very serious and pretty thoughtful, but also very young and very naive and very scared and very unsure and very greedy and very selfish and very much like, 
but I want to do this because I'm young and I want to do things. And I'm like, "Uh uh-huh. It is interesting when you hear somebody say like, I trust this. I fully am going into it, but I don't want to think about it too much. Abby said, is there many women that convert to Islam? So many modern women are converting to Islam. I think if I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Islam is the number one conversion for women right now. David says, I remember when I converted to Islam, I was getting a lot of mean stares. I was told later on that's because I'm a white man. Oh, that's interesting. I feel like a lot of religions are very welcoming to new people that come into it because they want more people a part of it. That's interesting. I've never heard of Islam, Muslims being upset with white people unless they're like black Islamists then that's different, right? Jack says, how are fours meant to interact with twos when everything in two bubbles feels so superficial, judgmental, and oblivious? It feels like twos are playing a character to fit in. Well, I think a big part of it is realizing they're not. I mean, some people are and everyone is to an extent, but they're not really. They're more or less picking the TV show that fits the character trope that they are, which we all are doing. We're all fitting into the bubble that makes sense to us. It's just on the layer you do it. So twos think the whole bubble is a representation of their consciousness. Well, fours realize there is no bubble to represent the consciousness and fives like fully accept it. So fours realize it logically and fives kind of encompass it. So when fives start engaging in two arguments, it's really interesting. Like a five should never be offended over the bear versus man in the forest thing. That makes no sense. Unless they're engaging in their body and like in their trauma. Then I'm like, oh, you're not thinking about this as a full five. You're thinking about this as like the person that you are because of your trauma. But also it's not the same argument people are making about like, oh, logically you choose the bear because logically or the man because logically you wouldn't choose the bear. It's like these are completely different conversations, right? And then on top of that, there's a new TikTok going around of would you rather choose for men? Would you rather choose a woman or a dog to be in the forest with you? And all the men are choosing a dog. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, why wouldn't you choose a dog? But also, would you rather have a dog or a bear? Would you rather have a man or a dog or a dog or a woman? Like the at the end of the day, People who are taking this personal are having like some sort of weird bubble attachment to the question, but also we all have attachment because we all have trauma and identity. And so when we're having a conversation about what would a five do and what would a four do, it's all up to the consciousness. So, you know, Maiden says actually the four would be the one playing a role in the two bubbles, to be honest. I think the four would be the, yeah, I think the four would be playing the role the most, but feel very much like they didn't want to. I know when I was a four, I really resented the idea of having to play the role in a very specific way. So you know how like two autists or divergents get upset they have to play a role? They're playing a role within a bubble. Now try to play a role within the universe, right? That's the difference is like two people might have a feeling of like, I don't want to play a role in this bubble. I feel fake, right? Like Sneeko says he has to almost like hide his, his Muslim, his Islam, because he has to like code switch or whatever. That's different. Right? Like that's different than a person who's having a realization of consciousness in relation to all of the universe. Like it's a very, those are two, they're they're layers. So imagine everything is just a layer of depth and then how you explore that is up to you and where you stop is up to you. Because once you reach five, it's not like that's the end. It's just the beginning of the new journey. So it's really up to you. It's like when you, okay, it's like being religious when you join and you're like, I just love religion. It's like, I so fit in here. And then you become a scholar of the church and then you become a dedicated monk and then you become, there are layers to even religion. So when people join religion, you can be like a casual or a super in-depth. You can be very strict or very like chill. Same with introspection, same with extrospection. You can go into your own consciousness, chill, very light, very default, Or you can go dig deeper and dig deeper until you realize like, where do I play a role in the universe itself? Because that's what religious people are doing. They're playing a role within the universe, within the bubble construct of a God. So they have a religion that tells them their goal and and their purpose in the universe. And I'm saying, but what if you didn't have that religion? How do you know the religion is the right one? And Sneeko is saying, I don't want to think about it too much. It's a lot. I'm just going to trust this is the right answer. And I'm saying, okay. Maddie says, what do you mean when you say consciousness? I mean like the consciousness that makes up the thing that is you. So when I use the word consciousness, I mean like that thing that is you that can't be replicated, that can't be um, recreated, that thing that is specifically you. That's what I mean by consciousness. Halion says the real uh, philosophical question is, did you pick a dog or a cat? Can I be honest? In a forest, would I rather have a dog or a cat? A dog. I said what I said. Shout out to Indiana, my cat. So I smile.
life a mess, please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, dun, dun.